Hey, good morning everyone, TrackMan44 here. Now, you know, I told you I was going to go ahead and fire that H up on a cold start and just take it out for a spin. Do you know what? It turned out this morning is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's pretty doggone cold. And I'm kind of a fair weather fella, you know what I mean? After spending uh, 40 some odd years in commercial HVAC on rooftops and things like that, after a life of misery on the job site, time for me to just kind of kick back. So I'm inside the shop and I thought, what better time than to take the carburetor off of that H and actually go through it a little bit? I've not done anything to it at all whatsoever. It's time just to go ahead because the day is nasty and cold. Take it apart and see if we can make it run just a little bit better. I'll feel better anyway, you know what I mean? I've got an ultrasonic parts washer over there. So whenever I get it apart, I'm probably going to run it through a few cycles with that uh, ultrasonic washer and the Chem Dip the carburetor cleaner if I have a, a reasonably uncontaminated container of it. But I don't want to put it through the Chem Dip first in the ultrasonic before I disassemble it simply because if there happens to be any rubber pieces on the inside, that Chem Dip is going to swell it phenomenally and uh, make it not usable. And, you know, I don't want to be stuck with a tractor that won't run, you know what I mean? Man, oh, that is nasty right there. I don't even know how that thing ran like that. Y'all can do what you want, but if you got a tractor that's running halfway decent and you go disassembling, uh, you always want to make sure how far in these different things are. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this in a half. Well, not even three quarters of a turn. So that thing's only out five eighths of a turn off of the seat. That gives me a good starting point whenever I put it back together. Tiny, tiny orifice right there. Looks like I've got to get 11 30 seconds or maybe a 5 16 deep socket to get out the, the nozzle. Nozzle orifices are in good, good shape. Got a tiny jet right there. I've got to get a brand new screwdriver for that. Now this is not a rebuild. This is just a, a clean up. When you're getting in these carburetors, if uh, you want to maintain those the pristine condition of those orifices, always try to keep a brand spanking new set of screwdrivers that haven't been bent or worn and you have a much better chance of dislodging those orifices, nozzles, jets, whatever you want to call them without doing any damage to them. In this particular case here, this guy here is not even an eighth inch across the top. See how tiny that little bitty spot is right there? And with any kind of a rounded screwdriver or misshapen screwdriver at all, you're going to ruin that. I'm not going to take all this apart because I don't have a rebuild kit for it. I just wanted to um, clean it, give it a little bit of a chance of running a little better. And if you look right here, take a look at this. Inside the carburetor, now I don't know how they got in there, but that's probably a spider nest of some kind. Hopefully I'll be able to get this out of here without doing any damage to it. I turned the carburetor upside down and the Venturi little literally fell out with the gasket attached to it. I may be able to salvage that gasket. If not, it'll make a good pattern for a replacement. Take a good cotton swab and in there will get that, that needle and seat to seat just a little bit better. Okay guys, here's the lineup that I use. This is the chem dip I was telling you about. And like all the rest of the chemical manufacturers, I think the EPA has forced them to make some changes uh, in their chemical makeup because it's extremely caustic. It's the nastiest stuff you want to you want to use. Uh, you don't want to breathe the vapors. You want to get it in your eyes. You don't want to get it on your skin. And you definitely don't want to get it on anything plastic, which is what the ultrasonic parts washer is made out of, plastic. If you dribble it on the plastic, it'll immediately frost that plastic and just make it just nasty looking as can be. And definitely don't want to drip it into your control buttons. Uh, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dump this into a gallon plastic container because I can control that gallon plastic container a little better uh, dumping it into the uh, ultrasonic washer. And this is a two and a half liter, 2.5 liter capacity. Now this is old. I've already used it on a number of carburetors so it's already got uh, some some scum in it and it's probably its effectiveness is probably just a little bit lessened. But I'm going to go ahead and pour this down on the floor. Eh, I'll be brave. I'll pour it up here. These things have a nice little bale inside there. Uh, the, newer, the old ones had stainless steel bales, but those corroded and, and rotted because it was uh, a cheaper stainless. The newer ones with the plastic, and I say newer, they're still five years old. The newer ones with the plastic seem to hold up a little better. 
like I say, there's a lot of residual in the bottom of this container already from previous cleanings. Set this on the floor. Make sure you've got nothing rubber in there. I've not even taken this stop out. That's not that important. That's just my throttle stop. Let's set that in there. And unfortunately, most of the time, these things do not fit all the way. So you have to do a little bit, then do a little bit different. However, this smaller carburetor, smaller than the typical Zenith on the Massey Harris's, or the Marvel Shevlers on the Massey Harris's, seems to be, uh, looks like it's going to fit. But like I said, don't get any splatters on your plastic. If you have anything rubber in your carburetor, it's going to swell it up about 10 times the normal size. You want to cover your objects, whatever it is you're working on, if at all possible. If not, you got to turn them over and put them in the other direction. I'm going to stop right there. 180 seconds, uh, that's typical cycle time. It's got a uh, temperature control here, a TC's temperature control, so I can add, make sure it's got heat whenever, uh, whenever we run the cycle. Go ahead and turn it on. Can you hear that ultrasonic hum or buzz? You probably can't hear it all the way up there in the camera. But we'll let that go for 180 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and reset the cycle and do it uh, maybe three cycles. Then we're going to invert the, uh, the carburetor body parts and then do it again. Then we'll go ahead and use carburetor spray clean and clean all the, the surfaces of the carburetor inside and out. And if necessary, we'll go through the routine again. Now let me tell you what they uh, what they mean by well, what I think they mean by ultrasonic. Ultrasonic means electronically somehow with the gadgetry inside there, um, it's doing whatever it's doing at way higher than 60 cycles per second, which is our normal uh, our normal electrical current. Uh, somehow or another they increase that cycles. That's what gives the little the tremendous vibration and wiggling and jiggling that dislodges all that stuff and carries it out. However, you can do the same thing not quite as efficiently. Uh, by making yourself a subsonic parts washer. Now, what you can do is you can take a small fractional horsepower motor and you can drill an off-center hole the size of the shaft and by off of, of a piece of thicker metal, small diameter, doesn't have to be very big at all, but you drill it off-center, drill and tap it for a set screw and put that on the motor shaft so that when it goes around and around, it's gonna to wanna to shake that motor and, and make it jiggle and wiggle. Take that motor then and bolt it to a framework that you can set a pot down inside, preferably a stainless steel pot. And then you can take an entire gallon of this stuff here and either dump it straight into the pot or set the gallon can inside the pot and put your parts inside the can. Turn it on and it'll run right there as long as you want it to run. It'll just sit there and just vibrate and wiggle and jiggle at whatever RPM the motor is turning, 1725 or 3450. You don't want a tremendously weighted thing on the shaft uh, because it might make it jump around, you know, it might even make it splash out. So you might have to play with that a little bit, but it works really well. I've got one under the bench that I made years and years ago, and oh my gosh, I have cleaned more carburetors with that than I have even these ultrasonic parts washers I've been using for a while. Hey, I've been talking long enough, it shut off at the first 180 second cycle. Hey guys, you know I joke about safety all the time, but this time here it is kind of nice to put on something uh, for your fingers. Now because I don't want to splash or get anything on this plastic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently pick this up. So now what we'll do is use air comp uh, compressed air and then carburetor cleaner and we'll go ahead and clean this the rest of the way. Now we're going to go about the business of getting the handy dandy O'Reilly coat choking carburetor cleaner and the air compressor fired up. We're going to blow out all those parts and pieces and I got to get me another glove on this hand here. It's always kind of a good idea to wear safety glasses around this stuff. I like to spray and get the, all the chem dip off of it first. I see something I forgot to take out. It's very vital you clean all those crossover passages, everything in there. It's got to be completely clean. Even, even a passage whenever you've got the throttle plate completely closed, it's still dumping fuel past the throttle plate right into the venturi. That's so the tractor will stay running whenever you turn your throttle all the way down to nothing. So now we got this out of here, so. All the passages are good, in real good shape. 
And all I gotta do is remember where all the parts and pieces go in this little guy. We gotta start with this little bitty, little bitty jet. Go with our nozzle. Now ideally you replace all your fiber washers and everything. That that will typically come in your kit. I didn't buy a kit because this thing really was running okay. I just really wanted to clean it up a little bit. That's the one that was five-eighths of a rotation out. Assembly the carburetor is really important on this little notch that's in here because that notch has got to fit perfectly on a, a uh, the governor's rod that actually comes across that piece of pipe. It's got to engage, engage correctly or it's not going to run. Probably need to buy a whole kit for it if it uh, doesn't straighten up and run a little better um, or run reasonably close to perfect. I need a kit because I need to replace the seals and stuff you know in the shaft. Uh, might even need to replace the shaft, it's probably worn. A few other things that might be included. Probably need a new gasket because that one's got part of it broken off. But as long as it gets on there and runs at least as good as what it was, we should be okay. So here we got it. That's that Farmall H carburetor. I don't even know what brand it is. You know, I'm not a really a Farmall guy, you know. But at least it has a model number on the side of it, so if you need a kit, you can always use those numbers on that little circular brass tag, and you can uh, get them from Stein or any number of tractor. Uh, suppliers you know but anyway it's all cleaned it's back to the settings that it was whenever I took it apart and we're ready to put it back on and uh, then we do our cold start see if it's gonna work or not this is trackman 44 and I'm out of here guys